When someone asks you, what causes air pollution? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, I'm pretty sure you may be thinking about a factory with a huge chimney puffing out smoke. Or maybe you're thinking about all those cars with the black smoke coming out of their exhausts. Well, while these are sources of pollution, these aren't the only sources of pollution. In fact, in a lot of places, these are not the major sources of pollution. So what is it that actually causes pollution? Well, all the causes of pollution can be divided into two types, man-made and natural. Now, the man-made sources of pollution are things like burning fuel, like cars burning fuel or generators burning fuel to uh, generate electricity. It could be even those factories that we were talking about. But even things like construction sites also produce a large amount of pollution, air pollution. Burning waste is another major source of air pollution. Now, to the natural sources of pollution, volcanoes could be a large source of pollution because they emit a lot of gases into the atmosphere. Forest fires are a source of pollution. Cyclones and dust storms. Earthquakes are a cause of air pollution. Ever thought about that? When earthquakes happen, sometimes poisonous fumes from within the earth come out and enter the atmosphere, and that causes air pollution. Even microorganisms released into the atmosphere cause air pollution. Right? Okay, now what if someone asked you, what are the major pollutants in the atmosphere? When I was a child, I always thought that CO2 is the bad guy. It's the worst pollutant out there. Turns out, CO2 is really not that bad after all. In fact, CO2 is a greenhouse gas that elevates the temperature of the earth, but it really doesn't cause that much pollution. There are much worse stuff. So what are the different types of pollutants then? Well, let's answer that question. Now, one type of pollutant is called particulate matter. These are very small particles, either solid or liquid, that are found in the air. You can think of this as tiny dust particles, though they're not always dust, it could be liquid as well, but something like that. Now, let me give you an idea of how small, how tiny these particles are. If this was a single strand of hair, and I zoomed in to the strand of hair, this strand of hair would have a diameter of approximately 75 microns. These particulate matter particles are smaller than 75 microns. We have two types of particulate matter. One of them is called PM10, and this dot here would approximately be the size of a PM10 particle if this was the width of a strand of hair. And our, our second type of particulate matter particle is called PM2.5, and that's how tiny it would be in comparison to a single strand of hair. So I'm sure you've pictured that these are really, really small. But I'm also sure you're wondering what this 10 and 2.5 is. It's nothing big. It's very simple. PM10 refers to all the particles whose size is less than 10 microns or 10 micrometers. PM2.5 is all the particles that have a size smaller than 2.5 microns or 2.5 micrometers. Right? Where do these particles come from? What are the sources? Well, construction dust is one source. Road dust is another source. Even factories, the smoke of factories produce particulate matter. Automobiles produce particulate matter and every few years we make the emission norms stricter and ensure that our automobiles are producing less and less particulate matter. Volcanoes, a natural source of particulate matter. Even forest fires produce a lot of particulate matter and that stays suspended in the atmosphere. Now, okay, all we understood that particulate matter is produced by all these things, but what's the harm? Right? What if we have some really tiny particles in the atmosphere? I mean, who's it uh, harming? Right? Well, particulate matter can cause respiratory issues like asthma. Particulate matter can cause a lot of burning or irritation in the eyes. It can cause lung cancer. It's pretty serious. Okay? Let's move on to the next type of pollutant. These are a few harmful gases. Sulfur oxides are pretty harmful. Sulfur oxides like SO2 or SO3 are all combined and put into one group called the SOX category, where X actually stands for either 2 or 3, right? And sometimes we call it SOX. Interesting, right? Okay, next we've got nitrogen oxides, NO and NO2. Now we call these NOX, yes, where X stands for either 1 or it stands for 2. Right? SOX and NOX are uh, produced by various factories. SOX and NOX are produced by automobiles. SOX and NOX are produced by coal power plants. This is a pretty major contributor to this type of pollution. Now the question is, okay, how are SOX and NOX harmful? 
well. Socks and knocks can cause a range of diseases like respiratory issues like asthma can be caused by socks and knocks. Haze and smog in the atmosphere is caused by socks and knocks. And this can cause airplanes to not be able to land. It can cause accidents with automobiles, it causes a lot of problem. Socks and knocks also have another major problem. They cause something called acid rain when they mix with water vapor in the atmosphere. There's a whole video on acid rain. You'll, you can go ahead and check it out. It's pretty interesting. Okay, our next type of pollutant is carbon monoxide. Its uh, symbol is CO. Why is carbon monoxide dangerous? To understand that, we've got to understand a little bit about how oxygen works in the human body or in any animal for that matter. So when oxygen combines with hemoglobin in the blood, hemoglobin is what we have in our blood, it forms oxyhemoglobin. This is a chemical compound, a chemical reaction happens here. And this oxyhemoglobin is really important because this is what eventually gives us energy. Okay. Now, the thing with carbon monoxide is it mimics oxygen and it can react with hemoglobin in our blood and it can end up giving us something called carboxyhemoglobin. Now, carboxyhemoglobin has no benefit, it just causes harm to the body. And uh, the problem with this carbon monoxide is that the body cannot detect carbon monoxide if it's there in the atmosphere. So, carbon monoxide is odorless, it has no smell, it has no color. And uh, so, when you breathe it in, the body thinks you're breathing in oxygen and slowly it causes harm to the body. And so, carboxyhemoglobin is something that's really, really bad. Okay, so what harm does this cause? Small amounts can cause dizziness, uh, larger amounts cause heart damage, even larger amounts can cause death. Yes, and this is not a joke. Around the world, a lot of people die of carbon monoxide poisoning every year. Okay, now let's move on to our next type of pollutant called ozone depleting substances. Let me explain what ozone depletion is. Sounds fancy, but it's really simple. Here's the earth. The earth is surrounded by an atmosphere, right? There's a layer in the atmosphere called the ozone layer. This is made up of the ozone gas. Now, this ozone gas protects us from UV rays. How does it do that? When a UV ray, an ultraviolet ray, tries to enter the Earth's atmosphere, the ozone layer absorbs this UV ray and protects the Earth from UV rays. Now, certain pollutants in the past have caused a hole to get developed in the ozone layer. And because of this, if UV rays try to enter the atmosphere at this point, they will be able to get through and hit the Earth's surface, causing harm, right? Let me show you a schematic image, a diagram to show you what it looks like when you try to draw a diagram, right? So this is the Earth's uh, atmosphere in 1984, and this is the Earth's atmosphere in 1997. You'll notice that there's a huge hole in the ozone layer here, and there's some ozone la layer depletion here and here. Right? Now, this happened in the 90s because of certain chemicals being used in different products. We'll come to that in a moment. But this stuff is really serious. Why? Because damage to the ozone layer causes skin cancer. Now, what are these substances that cause the damage? They are called ozone depleting substances. There are mainly two types of substances. One is called CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. The other one is HCFCs, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, funny names. Thankfully, these are banned because they were causing harm to the ozone layer. Uh, you may be wondering where these were found. Well, these things were used in spray cans in the 90s. These things were used in AC refrigeration systems as a refrigerant, uh, in refrigerators as a refrigerant. But once we figured out that this was causing harm to the ozone layer, they were banned around the world and slowly the ozone layer has recovered. Okay, now to our last type of pollutant, pesticides. Pesticides are sprayed over crops for a good reason, right? Pesticides kill all those pests, insects, microbes that are going to harm the crop. But what happens is these pesticides are harmful for these insects, but they're harmful for humans as well, especially when used in very large quantities or when sprayed indiscriminately. If you notice, this guy is not even wearing a mask, so if he inhales this pesticide that he's spraying, it can cause a problem to him. Pesticides can cause breathing difficulty, wheezing, it can cause dizziness and even seizures if inhaled in large quantities. Okay, to summarize, these are the pollutants that we discussed, right? And if you look carefully, the top three could be classified as both man-made and natural sources of pollution right? Whereas the bottom two are usually only man-made, right? That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.